Yes, people, we are back again. Another stream for you. Another in the hot seat. And today in the hot seat, I've got a very special guest, man. I've been meaning to get this guy on for a long time. Big fan. Donny Minerals in the house. How are you, my bro? Big up, my geezer. Let's have it right up to Chelsea at Minerals FC. Salute to everyone here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we see things they'll never see. Let's have it right. But big up to you, my geezer, for having me on. Uh, pleasure to come on today. You know what I'm saying? Uh, come on, man. You're welcome anytime, my bro. And it's a pleasure to have you. Uh, I want to talk things, man, because, I you know, I, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I kind of like to think I say how it is when it comes to Arsenal. And I don't see many of your fan base say how it is. But you, my friend, are one that does. Uh, I watch a lot of your content and you are friends with a lot of people that I'm friends with. Uh, big up to Goonie. Big up some of the other guys you have on as well, man. Uh, you kind of say how it is and aren't afraid to say how it is as far as I'm concerned. Um, however, I do speak to some Chelsea fans that don't see it how it is and have got their heads buried in the sand and stick their fingers in their ears anytime you mention the ownership and where you are in the league right now. So I wanted to get you on and have a real honest conversation. We're going to talk all things Chelsea. We're going to talk Arsenal as well. We're going to talk Kai Havertz. And we're going to get an understanding of where you're at right now. But before we went live, you wanted to mention something which was, I think, very topical and something that I think is quite admirable if it does pay off because it is about fans uniting together and sending out messages about them not being happy. So I don't know where you want to start, Johnny. Um, I don't know if you want to start with that news. I don't know if you want to start with how your thoughts are on Chelsea. Um, I think it's always good for me to get an understanding of where you're at for people that don't know and that haven't come across your content, man. So the microphone is yours, man. What's things like at Chelsea at the moment, bro? Well, it's an absolute shambles at Chelsea. You know what I'm saying? Anyone who thinks it ain't, uh, I don't know, they're a long way from Starbucks. Love that super grandma. Let's have it right. Um, but Chelsea as a whole right now, ever since Don Roman's been sanctioned and had his club robbed of him, um, we have been gutted um, and shat upon. And it's as simple as that. These new owners that are coming, this consortium, uh, you've got uh, Siri Merchant Egg Barley, who's lovely little Birkin bags walking in that bridge. Uh, you've got Jose Fagaziano, co-founder of Clear Lake with Siri Merchant. You've got Meatloaf Bowley. I would do anything for pound notes. Experience. <laughs> we ain't going to buy that. Yeah. Um, all that. Then you've got uh, Weiss, the hunchback of Notre Dame, bruv. I mean, this guy's a 5% merchant who just points at players that we've got and said that he's good players. Sell him, Swiss merchant. Uh, <laughs> he's got an actual agenda on Roman. Um, he actually came out publicly and says, I've got a driven ambition to buy Chelsea Football Club because of my dislike of Roman Abramovich. Um, you've got Egbali coming out with statements saying it was a poorly run club. Uh, they didn't look at data. They didn't look at, um, you know... Uh, monetizing content and all this nonsense. But yeah, we won the lot under Roman. We were the most successful in 20 years. So he's waffling a load of bangs and mash. Um, so um, that's who, who's bought our club. Since they've come in, they've gutted our entire Champions League winning team. Um, they've spent a billion, 235 million of that billion has gone to the Seagull merchants and Tony Bloom, who's loving it, flying over Stamford Bridge, shitting like a seagull. Um, and um, that's basically where we are. We've got a we've got a team of an average age of twenty to twenty two years old. Um, we've got rid of every bit of experience. We're exiling Thiago Silva at the moment because he won't sign an NDA, um, even though he's not extending his contract. So he's rotting on the bench when we need him, uh, especially in the Carabao Cup final when we uh, we lost to Klopp, the veneer merchant C team, and a bunch of his kids. Um, so yeah, let's have it right. Uh, it's not too happy, happy days at the moment. Um, but you know, Melts in the fan base were saying we had a 10 out of 10 window. We've upgraded on everything in our squad. We're going to get top four. We're going to compete. And here we are sitting back to back mid table. Uh, I actually predicted after I saw the final squad in preseason that we will probably finish around about 10th, maybe eighth at best. And people was laughing at me. Uh, well, where are we now? We're sitting 11th um, and we've spent a billion quid and there's nothing of world-class minerals in this team because all the world-class minerals have been gutted out. Kante's, Kovacic, Mount, Havertz. You know what I'm saying? Big players, bruv. Champions League winning players. Delivered us the big trophies, the Holy Grail, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? They gutted our elite gaffer in Thomas Tuchel. Sacked him because he wouldn't be a yes man. You know what I'm saying? Brought us Jellyfish Potter from Brighton. Five-year contract, 12 million a year. 
That didn't go very well, did it? No, he got sacked. NDA merchant as well. I haven't heard him speak. He's probably in some sort of... He's probably in the Clown Lake Asylum as we speak, bruv. You know what I'm saying? Um, then we brought in Frank Lampard, PR stunt. Um, didn't really work. Shambles, enter the season. Didn't get Champions League football. Um, and then you bring in uh, ex Spursy Bottletino, bruv, um, who, let's have it right, for all the old school, you're never going to accept Pochettino, bruv. You're never going to accept him. It doesn't matter what he does. He's Spursy. He's proper Spursy. So that tells you that these clowns don't give a shit about the supporters, don't understand the heritage, don't understand the culture, and clearly don't want to fucking well win anything because at this current moment in time, we ain't competing for nothing, bruv. You know what I'm saying? But, but, salute to everyone. Smash the likes. You know what I'm saying? All that jazz. Yeah. Um, the, the the breaking news today, or I'm actually, I'm buzzing, is that the Chelsea Supporters Trust have just come out with an official open letter to these clowns saying, in other words, what the fuck is going on? Because we're not happy. And we got no clarity on what this direction is. You're increasing season tickets. You're increasing increasing coach charges. You're increasing food and drink beverages at the bridge. You're increasing everything, but increasing our, our fucking position in the league table or, or getting us Champions League football or actually winning any silverware. All right? And not only that, you're gutting out all our players and Conor Gallagher is going to be another one like Mason Mount. He's going to be shipped out, exiled for the pound note. And that's all they love, um, to bring in more kids. But I'm, I'm very happy. I'm buzzing at the minute that we've we've, we've, we've taken the first step, like the Strasbourg Ultras. I uh, don't know if you know about Strasbourg, but the Ultras themselves, they're going to protest on the 31st of March because they are owned by our owners as well. They've been gutted, stripped of all their identity, stripped of experience, brought in a load of kids. They are now, well, they've just gone up to 12 because they beat Nantes. Um, who are who they were above, just above relegation. Um, so they've gone up, but it's going to be up and down like it is with Chelsea because let's have it right. They use AI scouting, yeah, to buy players. They use data, and that's all they use. Even to recruit directors, mate. Yeah, that's why we got the Carrotine Merchant, Win Stanley. We got um, Stuart Little, Lawrence Stewart from Monaco. All dead teams, bro. Mid teams, mid mentality. I mean, it's mid everywhere you like. You just look around Chelsea. And it's just mid. You know what I'm saying? It's all mediocre. Everyone's propping and overhyping mediocrity. It's not elite standards. The standards have been gutted. And they've used the PR merchants, all the brown envelopes, all your Fabrizio Romano, 20 a day, 20 a day merchant. Yeah. Uh, you've got, um, what's it? Pornstein, the Pornstein dagger and all this jazz. You've got, um, who else? Uh, ben Toothpick Jacobs, Nizar Kinsella. All these wrong and spab. They've just gutted up. Destroyed. They participated in the destruction of our football club. That's exactly what they've gone and done. They they are part of the narrative that was set by these clowns because they're all in their pocket, the clowns, yeah? All the clown legs, yeah? Um, and so it filters down to all the YouTube channels, all the little fucking brown envelope minions that want to get stuck in, want to get into the, the elephant walks and all that. Um, this is this is where we are now. It's a shambles, a circus, a pantomime at Chelsea. I'm not standing for it, bruv. I'm here to land it, bruv. I'm here to stand for my football club, fight for my football club, because this is not Chelsea. Anyone who thinks this is Chelsea, you're a long way from fucking Starbucks. Let's have it right, because this is not Chelsea. This is a long way from Chelsea, bruv. Yeah? Chelsea, Chelsea was up there, right? All we had to do was be tweaked with Tuchel, back the elite gaffer that we all loved and backed, and help us kick on to challenge Manchester City. Now, you ain't challenging Man City. You can't even challenge United are in the gutter and they're above us. You can't even challenge Brighton Seagull Merchants and the fraudulent Wolverine, Gerald Air and all that. He's fucking above us as well. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what are we competing for? Did you know, Dan, yeah? Top, top first position in the, in the Premier League, up to sixth, 157 million, standard. That's what you get, all right? Sixth from, from seventh, all the way down to 15th or maybe even 18th, you get 140 million. So they don't care. Either way, they're getting their 140 million. What's 70 million to get sixth place? And you're still not guaranteed what? Europa League. You ain't going to get Europa League anyway. And if you do, you've got FFP up your asses as well, which is another discussion. But amongst all of that, yeah, the Chelsea Supporters Trust have come out and landed it like the Strasbourg Ultras. They ignored the Strasbourg Ultras. For three three occasions, 
we've had the CEO come out, this wrong one, yeah, all right, who Bowley knew signed off all this nonsense and didn't override it because, no, that's my CEO. Uh, this is his first decision, so we can't override him. Uh, yeah, well, you can, mate. You're a fucking chairman. And this chairman, Bowley, Meatloaf, yeah, all right, he's earning 20 million a year at our football club sitting as chairman, an employee, yeah, 20 million a year. He's milking our football club. We've got a glazer clause that Roman put in that these clowns can't extract any money out of our football club. He's extracting 20 million a year. And in five years, they switch it over to Siri Merchant and he has a, got a nice little feast up and gets his pockets full, 20 million a year. That's 200 million in 10 years that they're going to run our football club, bro. All right? 200 million, bro. Yeah? That they're making. Milking our club. Um, right? So on top of all that, We've got them, the CEO come out today, gibberish, waffle, like a politician, let's have it right. Well, now the Chelsea are saying it's going to be super toxic. There's going to be, expect Roman chance, basically, in a nutshell. Not in, they didn't say that, but expect it. Anti-ownership chance, Rona Berwick chance, Tommy Tuchel chance. You know what I'm saying? Gut it. Let's get you out. Clown Lake out. And that's Do you think this will be successful, John? Do you reckon this will be successful? Do you reckon you got enough fan base on side to get get these out? I think. I think. Yeah. Like, don't everyone underestimates. Forget all these Twitter virgins online, bruv. They ain't got a fucking Scooby. Yeah. All the all the all the old school Chels, like we did at the Super League. Yeah. All right. Imagine that larger. Yeah. Because Super League was about protecting football. Right. And not having Chelsea sell out that way. And Roman pulled the plug on it. Peter Cech came out and we stopped the Super League. All right. But this is about saving our football club. This is a different level, bruv. It's a way different level. This is this is about our club only. So when we all get together, you don't mess with Chelsea. Forget the Glazer at Manx up north, yeah? They protest every week like it's a fucking Sunday market, bruv. When Chelsea protests, we will protest. We'll do it once. The PR will be relentless, bruv. And all the Pornsteins and the Matt Laws and the Nizar Kinsellas and all these wrongings, Fabrizio, the fucking Kingpin, yeah? They will have to report on this and they will have to write it, not only because they want the clicks, but they have to. They ain't got a choice, bruv. We've got them by one air on a nutsack. And that's why we are right now. We The, the power has always been with the supporters. Always. And when the supporters come together... You only need 10% of the entire fan base at the bridge, stop a game, protest, happy days, bro. Sort it out or get out. But you ain't going to sort it out because these guys are arrogant. These Yanks come from Moneyball. You know what I'm saying? They come from uh, all this AI scouting. You know the AI scouting, yeah, right, is used by Burnley, bro. And not only there, it doesn't stop there. It's used by the entire MLS. Well, why aren't you buying all the MLS players that are using AI scouting? Are they not good enough? I'm asking for a mate. You know what I'm saying? It, it defeats oh, the old object. What the fuck are you using this AI? Right? Why are you using AI to buy players? Why are you not building with a gaffer? Why are you not giving a gaffer? Like Lego Ed, he's got the keys at Arsenal. He probably knows who the tea lady is. All the way up to the fucking Edu sucks toes, bruv. You know what I'm saying? Like he knows what he's doing. Like he's got a, he's got a free roll there. Well, we don't have that at our club. It's all yes man tax. Everyone's a yes man, from the gaffer in the dugout all the way up to the directors. And these directors are mid. You know what I'm saying? What have they won? What pedigree have they got? They have come from Brighton, mate. Come from Monaco fighting relegation. Look at the centre backs we bought. They were fighting relegation battles. Disaster scored a lovely own goal the other day. All right, oh, like awful. The TA can't even fucking get out of the injury bed. All right, we got Fafana on two hundred grand a week, who's not even played any minutes. You got Nkunku, who's got a terrible injury record, and he's meant to be the saving grace. <laughs> no balloons, bruv. There's nothing. <laughs> he's dead. What's your, where's all this optimism coming from, bruv? I don't understand it. I don't Delusion. get it. I don't get it. I see Chelsea fans not like you that are like. Oh, you don't rate our, I can't believe you don't rate our players. I can't believe you don't think this is going to go bang soon. We've got all the money in the world. Look at this young team. They're all going to become good. It's just Pochettino. That's the problem. And I'm like, this is a case study of how not to run a football club, in my opinion. 
like literally spending a load of money, having no plan whatsoever. And I used the term before, like a monkey throwing a dart, because that's what it is. They're just gone, boom, it's landed on Mudrick, we'll have him. Boom, it's landed on Madueki. Boom, it's landed on Nicholas Jackson. They don't know any scouting whatsoever. They ain't got any philosophy, style, plan, schedule, process, project, program, whatever you want to call it. Ain't nothing I can see. All I can see is that Potter and Lampard and Potch are all doing the same thing, which to me is a common dominator, mate, and it's up top. You've got to get rid of the, when the, the What's that term with the fish? It rots at the top. You cut the head off. That's what's got to happen here, in my opinion. Now, I think it's hilarious because I'm an Arsenal fan, so I can't stand Chelsea, right? Like, you can't stand Arsenal. But I look at it and I think, if Chelsea got any standards as a fan base, whatever, they wouldn't put up for this. Because I'm used to Chelsea, yeah, seeing Drogba's. I'm used to the old school when I even saw Zola's. I'm used to SEN's and Lampard's and Terry's and Carvalho's and Czech's. Not these cl- these clowns that are in at the moment. Like, honestly, I don't actually think these players are as good as some people are making out. Like, honestly, some of the people are saying it's just Poch. This is a great side. Should be in a top four. I don't see that, mate. I don't see a top forward. I don't see a top amazing Petr Cech goalkeeper. I don't see midfield that's working. I see a lot of money spent on it. But I would, honestly, there wouldn't be many I look at. Like, real talk, Johnny. This season, I've been impressed with Malo Gusto and Cole Palmer. And then I'm struggling. Because Caicedo and Enzo don't look £115 million. Yeah. And most of the other players at the moment look to be a complete waste of money or just underperform like Sterling. I don't know. Like, this is real talk from me, John. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, you're not wrong, are you? I mean, like, let's have it right. Take out take out Cole Palmer, all right, out of our team. There's no goals or creation. <laughs> let's have it right. And also, where's he in the big games? Where was he in the Liverpool final? Like, I'm asking you, I'm asking, like, all these so-called... Wrongans that go, we've upgraded on Kai and we've upgraded on Mason Mount with Cole Palmer and he's almost getting a 30 GA. Yeah, where's the 30 GA taking us? All the way to mid-table? Or we got 30 GA taking us top four and winning Champions Leagues and Super Cups and Club World Cups, getting into three domestic finals. Well, I know which one I prefer, but I'm <laughs> saying I'm not digging on Cole Palmer because he's a lovely talent. But that's all he is, talent. You know what I'm saying? That's all we got is potential and talent. There's nothing to say that 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 potential blossoms, bruv, into something world-class. And the trajectory on each player isn't going to all traject at the same same direction at the same time because we're human beings. Football doesn't work like that. Football players don't work like that. And we've got players that are getting the... the, the, getting the, the it's just criminal, bruv. It's blasphemous to Chelsea that these kids are just being given this Chelsea shirt of being the first team. He's absolutely well, criminal. What do you make of... Because I was talking, like, Don tells me that Mudrick and Jackson are good players and that Palmer's better than Saka and Mudrick's got more about his game than Martinelli. And I'm saying to him, I like Don, like, big up to Don. But I'm like, look, man, surely you're not being serious, like, when you're saying this stuff. I'm looking at these kids and I'm thinking, what are people seeing? What is he seeing then? Because Nicholas Jackson, I'm used to Drogba, not Nicholas Jackson, right? I played against... He used to score against us every bloody game that we played against him, right? That's who I'm used to as a Chelsea forward, not this Jackson kid. I'm used to having wingers like Hazard and Robin, not Mudrick. Do you know what I'm saying? So when I'm coming up against him going, keep Mudrick and keep Jackson because ain't no good. I've got these... I've got Chelsea fans telling me that he's got more about his game than Martinelli and that he's actually a wicked player, this Jackson. I'm being harsh. I'm like, what's happening here? What am I watching then? What am I missing my eyes? Because I ain't seeing it, John. I ain't seeing I don't it, know. Maybe they, Maybe they need Lee Gunner's specs to see the process or see the talent, bruv, because I don't see fucking nothing, bruv. All I see is uh, Jackson twerking for a slosh pot wet on social media, um, needing motivation because playing for Chelsea is not enough motivation. This guy's nowhere near Drogba. And, and even Jonathan Pearce, criminal offence to say, even if he's half the player Drogba, you know, what a player they've got. Half the player Jogba. I want the whole fucking lot, bro. I don't want half the player Jogba. What are we talking about? Is that our standards now? No chance, bro. Jackson is never going to be... Listen, why are we looking at Osman then if Jackson's so unbelievable, bro? Someone explain to me. If Jackson's the, the, the saving grace, you know what I'm saying? Why are we not? Why are we looking at Osman and all these other strikers and Vahilovic's and all this jazz? Yeah? Because he ain't good enough. He's not Chelsea level. He's Villarreal level, bro. He's not Chelsea level, right? Mudrick, I do like Mudrick. I think as a 10 down the middle, he looks much better, more comfortable. He needs a free role. But the guy's not even been allowed to be, be, be developed, bruv. He doesn't even get played because he's fallen out with Poch. Let's have it right. And they'll probably try and sell him, bruv. Or who knows what's going to happen with Mudrick. But Mudrick, I do like him. I think he gets a lot of stick. 
Um, but at the end of the day, when you've got a price tag on your shoulders, you've got to deal with the pressure, mate. A lot of these kids are kids and they ain't got mentality to deal with pressure. Enzo Fernandez, 105 million. What's he done? Like when I when I deep it, all right, I mean, even Kante's got more goals and assists than this geezer, bruv. And Kante's not even meant to be up the pitch. You know what I'm saying? Look, look right. when I look at my midfield, Georgino Kovacic and Kante, he's clear of every play we bought. And I'm not even saying, like, they're miles clear, right? And we've spent $235 million on these players. Plus Lavia, that's another six. You're close to $300 million on a midfield. That is still not an upgrade, right? The front line. Who's better than Mountain Kai? Who the fuck is better? There ain't one player better. I don't want to hear it, yeah? I don't want to hear it, bruv. I don't want to hear it. Anyone who tells you otherwise, they're a long way from Starbucks, mate, and they're fucking deluded, man. Oh, right. I hear it. I hear and it. Then, and the back line, back line, Thiago Silva's our best centre-back. He's our only world-class player. He's 40 years old. Tell you everything you need to know about what these clans have facts. done to us. Right? Facts. Absolute facts, bro. Like, I can't literally, it's up, mate. I can't disagree with anything you've said, mate. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about um, the players that have gone. Because Jorginho and Kai Averts are two that have come to us. Mason Mount, you mentioned, has gone to Man United. Um, what were your thoughts on that? Because I had a lot of uh, I had a lot of Chelsea fans laughing at me, like literally cracking up laughing, going, Oh my god, are we howling? You've spent this much on Kai Averts. You've got Jorginho, he's done, he's finished. I can't lie to you, I wasn't overly excited by either of them. I was a bit deflated by Jorginho, but only because we were linked with Kai Sado. And then, obviously, Kai Havertz come in and it was like, well, where the hell has that come from? Not been impressed by what I've seen at Chelsea. But do you know what, Johnny? Both of them, actually, they ain't been bad for Arsenal. Like, Kai Havertz has had a good 2024. And, obviously, Jorginho has come in and done a really good job when party has been out, which, to be fair, has been a lot of the time. So, I mean, have you replaced them is my first question. And two, how gutted are you that they both went? No, we haven't replaced it. We downgraded in every aspect. I think Cole Palmer would have been nice to play with them as a squad player, but he shouldn't be carrying this team and leading this team. But the, the reality is our team is a bunch of 22-year-old, 20-year-old. So it's like that is the going rate, bruv. Um, but in terms of Ma Mason Mount was sold for FFP, clear as day. He didn't want to leave. He was desperate to stay. These clowns forced him out. Um, and United were the ones that got him on the cheap. 55 million is an absolute steal for a player at 24 years old who is the face of Chelsea, come through the ranks. That's like you selling Saka because you won't pay him 250 grand, all right? Um, that's like uh, the Glazers coming in and saying to Sir Alex Ferguson, yeah, we're selling Paul Scholes, right? <laughs> it's basically, that is what it is. You're selling your DNA. The one player that, He's, he's been captain through youth, captain the club more. He's captain the club, I think, six times under Tommy T and Lampard. He captain through youth. He was meant to be our captain, our next JT, so to speak. Even JT's even spoken about it. So you've sold that without blinking an eyelid. Don't give a shit. Doesn't mean anything to them. Because why they blew 635 million two windows, ruined the books um, on buying what? Shit. That they half of it they sold a year later. Um, Mason Mount leaving the football club is the biggest mistake, as is Kai. Kai's another one. Uh, Georgie, I expected to leave, but when they sold Georgie, Georgie was actually, from what I, what I know, Georgie wanted to go back to Italy at the end of the season, and he was likely to go on a free. But because Arsenal came in with the 12 million, Georgie actually bagged about 12 million. These lot only bagged 4 million out of that deal. So, um, great deal for Clown Lake. But they got him off the books and they didn't, you know, they'd rather get something than nothing. Georgie going to them, I expected that. But you replaced our DM with Enzo, who's not a DM. <laughs> because you don't know football. And you don't know what you're buying. You just went with, he's won a World Cup tax. So, Georgie, I expect to leave. He's got his flaws, um, but he's more of a squad player now. That's what he is. He's a squad player. And he was our vice-captain. So you, we let go of a vice-captain and we let go of a very strong 
well, he was a first teamer for us. But for you lot, you've got him as a squad player and he will help you kick on. He's got winning mentality. He's won the Euros, won Champions League, Super Cup, Club World Cup. He's he's been at Champions League football. He's a he's an elite player. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, gutted that he left. I had issues with Georgie. A lot of the Georgie stands got on my got on my nuts. But you know, at the end of the day, um, I will always love him and respect him um uh, because he won us at Champions League, and I don't care what anyone tells me. Um, he, for that, all the players that won the Champions League, they get all my love and respect because it's it's not the easiest one to win, as you lot know. Um, in terms of Kai Everts, <laughs> everyone knows about Kai. Listen, Stop. everyone knows about me Stop. and Mason Mount. Mason Mount's my baller, brother. Like, I, he will go and listen, so will Kai, as well as Mace. They will mud the fucking wrong ones, bruv. Every single one of them, right? And all the melts at Chelsea that will come at these players. Well, where are you now? What are you celebrating now? I'm asking because there's nothing to celebrate, bruv. Except, oh, I've got to look down here. Fucking nothing. Yeah. You're in my mud in my woods, bruv. That's where you are. But in terms of Kai, yeah, as Tuchel did, and I've always made the comparisons, Burkamp, Berbatov, Van Persie, Berbatov's even come out and compared himself, funny enough, after he's left Chels. After I said this shit, that he compares himself, he likens himself with Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz is a silky baller. We never played him in his rightful position because we never had a fucking proper DM, like a Declan Rice, for example. You know what I'm saying? We had George Hughes too slow on the transitions. Uh, we needed Kovacic and Kante to work with him, work extra hard. Now you've got Declan Rice with Georgino. It works because you've got a balance. But Kai, his best position, attacking right midfield, sometimes on the left, which is where I think he's playing now. Um, but Kai is that player. Um, he can play the false nine. We won the Champions League winning the false nine, but he had Mason Mount and Kai playing the double eights with Werner going in the middle. And then when, we, when we're when we without the ball, they separate Mount left, Werner right, Kai down the middle. And that's how it worked, you know. And we won the Champions League like that and we annihilated City. Let's have it all right. City, City, City. Put the kettle on Liam Gallagher. We're drinking your tears, mate. Um, but yeah, Kai's a baller, mate. He's a, he's a Rolls-Royce player. Um, he's only 24. And you're starting to see a Leverkusen Havertz, which is what I was raving about when he was at Leverkusen, to sign him. And when we did sign him. And the point at Chelsea, why I think, well, the way I see it, Chelsea failed him in the sense of he's quite a luxury player. And he's a player that needs a bit, he needs stability, needs a core and a balance. And we never had that at Chelsea. It was always like Mace playing out of position. You know what I'm saying? He played out of position on the right and got 30 GA. Cole Palmer's playing in his position, getting good stats. Imagine if you put Mace in his position. Imagine if you put Kai in his position. Because we had the cement boot rat last, uh, the season before. Um, and Kai was playing false nine all the time because he got benched. Um, we had the Bamiang who was shit. Um, was being exiled actually because the owners said to him, We're, we're not playing him because he's paper playing, we don't want to pay out on him. And he was a too cool, too cool guy. Um, but Kai's not really a false nine, he can play there, but he's better with us with, with a striker with him. So he's like the second strike, a bit like Dennis Burkamp plays off Berbatov, they play off strikers, um, they have that free role. That's what Kai is, man. And, and Kai's got everything in his locker, mate. Everything, mate. No, one, no one can mud me with Kai, bro. No one. I'm the only one on any platform of Chelsea and a lot of Arsenal were coming at him as well. Oh, why have we spent all this money on Kai? You don't get it, bruv. Even Lego Ed's praised all the things that I've been praising for all this time, bruv. You know what I'm saying? He's a he's a, he's a a wonderful player. 24 years old. Remember Dennis Bergkamp? When did he come to you lot? How old was he? He was he was a lot older than, than Kai Averts, I think, mate. I think he was yeah, 27. Something like that, 28. So imagine Kai when he does get to that 26, 27 bracket, yeah? That's when you're going to see, like, the creme de la creme because he's a player that's still developing. And now he's in a side that is balanced, bruv. It's, it's got all the, all the minerals there Mate. to compete. So we didn't have I that. I hope you're Chelsea. right. <laughs> Mate, I, I hope know. you're right. I, I don't doubt it. Listen, I hope you don't win the league and I hope you don't win the Champions League. I don't want you to win anything, bruv. 
Um, but that doesn't mud my opinion on Kai. If you don't win anything, that he still stands what a player he is and he will help you win something. You know what I'm saying? Because he's clutch. He's already been clutch for you lot in big moments. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes. And he's a clutch player, elite mentality. Champions League is his stage. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be interesting how he gets on with Muller at with Bayern Munich and all that. Um, but he's 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 no he doesn't shy away from that. He's he, you got to remember you brought in a winner, mate. How many players have you got that are, are actually winners? You know, yeah, what I mean? not many, man. Teams. Not many. They're too young to be winners. I, I listen when we bought him in. I thought, what the hell is this? I I weren't a big fan of him. I didn't see it Chelsea Chelsea too much in to, to make me go wow, well, right? But what I will say <clears throat> is he's put me he's put me. Not in the mud, but he's made me think, do you know what? Actually, he's done really well, particularly in 2024. He started off a bit slow, as most big signings do. But he's came in 2024, mate. He's scoring goals. He's assisting goals. He's scoring in big, big moments. And if we do win Sank this year, particularly domestically in the Premier League, we will look at it and go, do you know what? He scored last minute against Brentford, home man away. He scored a massive goal against Luton, which won us 4-3. People might laugh at that and go, oh, it's only Luton. But we weren't winning that if it weren't for him, mate. So he came on it. Yeah, came on in a Man City assist. He scored in the Brighton game to kill that game off. So, actually, he scored some fucking important goals, uh, Kai Havertz. 100% he has. And I hope it continues. Listen, a lot of people laughed when you said Dennis Burke. I know you said it with chest and fair play to you for that, mate. I might have bought that. I ain't seen anything like that yet. But, listen, if we got after player of Burke, I'll take it. Because I, I, I've loved He's one of my favourite ever players. But, listen, I, I've got to ask you, man, because a lot of people talk about it. I don't like bringing it up, to be honest, because it actually bores me. Anything to do with finance bores the pants off me, right? But I've got to bring up the, the the talk sport thing yesterday. And I don't know if this guy's is a financial expert. I've no idea if he is. I don't deal with finances. I'm allergic to numbers, mate. I can't stand them, right? But they were basically saying Chelsea are in the, in the mud when it comes to this FFP stuff, if they don't sort it out. And the three players they mentioned that you might have to sell unless you're in the, in, in the mud is Conor Gallagher. They mentioned about 50 million. Broyer. And he mentioned 40 million. I mean, they're going to do well to get out for him. And Shalaba, 25 million. They were afraid that they were talking you're going to have to get rid of because of this profit thing you get from it. But you are apparently really struggling when it comes to this financial stuff. And if that does happen and you get severe punishment, that again, Johnny, looks towards the ownership who ain't got a clue, doesn't it? Yep, because they're the ones that have been spending the finances. And uh, this is a message for them. Yeah, you fucking melts, clowns. Yeah, let's have it right. You ever try and mud our Don Roman, yeah? You better be very careful because the Chelsea won't have it, yeah? No one muds our Don Roman. Greatest only in world football, mate, yeah? That will ever be seen in, in football. You ain't going to see another Don Roman like this ever again who changed the game, bruv, yeah? FFP was put in place because of Don Roman, yeah? Let's have it right, yeah? So, um, listen, they trying to mud Roman, blaming him on deals of Azard, Etu and uh, Willian, well, Roman was in charge with, way after all these deals were done and you didn't approach us with FFP, yeah? Roman wrote off 1.5 billion debt, didn't care, didn't even get any, not one penny out of the sale of the football club and we're still waiting for that money to go to the Ukrainians, bruv. And it still hasn't gone because it's in the Bank of England earning interest, mate. So, yeah, UK government, let's have it right. Um, and uh, Clown Lake, let's have it right. Because Rain Group... They set it all up. It was all orchestrated by them and their PR to get these clowns in. But with FFP, Conor Gallagher's gone. Now, if he goes to Spurs, riots. Absolute riots, bro. Yeah. That'd be mad, wouldn't it? Yeah, you, you, you can't. You, if you sell it to Spurs, and it, I don't I don't think Conor will go because Conor's Chelsea. And I think he I, I don't. If, if it's like the only deal, I don't know. I mean, football's football. You never know in football. Look at Sol Campbell and that and all that. But I, I just think Connor will probably do his best not to go there personally himself. He's in a strong position where he can say, no, I'm going to run my contract down. And I think he should. Um, Connor's the most valuable player out of all the Cobham players it's for pure profit. They need to sell those all those players you mentioned. They've got to sell for pure profit. But there's sponsorship deals and all this that's flying about. And billionaires are billionaires. And these guys with numbers and money 
are on it. They might not seem like they're on it, and they definitely don't seem like it to me because of the way they've spent the money. Um, but how you spend it doesn't necessarily mean you don't know how to manage it. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, you can go and spend it on Primark. I'd rather go in Stony. Who's spending it better? I am. But they might think they're spending it really well. Do you know what I mean? Um, they might get a lot more for their money, right? But um, they'll find a loophole. They're loophole merchants, bruv, these lot. So they'll they'll find they'll find a way to get out of it. I think the guy on Talksport, Bars Barson, I think his name is Borson. Sorry, he's an ex ex city finance expert. So you know he's trying to push it a lot on on Chelsea. Um, but look, I wouldn't be surprised if we get some sort of point deduction. Uh, but the difficult they the difficulty they got is can they put the sponsorships in on the books? before the end of June, is it eligible? And also, can you sell Conor Gallagher's Trev's before the end of June? That's the sticky point, mm. is by the end of June, all right, you've got the Euros on, players don't want to be yep. doing transfers while they're at the Euros. <coughs> yep. um, and a lot of these players aren't going to want to go Saudi, mate. So they are in a big, big problem. I'm sure they'll try and find a way, but I think before it gets to that, the Chelsea will be protesting. If, if, if I'm being honest, I think it's going to kick off. The, the, the best thing that we can do as a football club, as supporters, is force these clowns to sell. And they can sell the club. This delusion that they can't sell the club, they can sell it. They bought it. They can sell it. You know what I'm saying? You know, another yeah. thing they're doing is they're raising the season tickets and all that by the CEO because they know they can't build a stadium. Because it's, we got we got what we call the Chelsea pitch owners. We own the pitch, yeah? Uh, a whole load of us have all bought parts of the pitch. So we have shares in that. That was introduced by Ken Bates. Big up Batesy, yeah? Legend, right? That's why they can't just relocate or build somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Because of us. So they, they've turned it around and gone, we're going to increase the season ticket prices. And by doing that, we're going to get the equivalent of 60,000 capacity we're doing the season tickets, doing coaches up, increasing, increasing membership and tickets. And they're selling at the Man United game, the dugout seats are five grand each, mate, a pop, right? That's what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? Give mate, me one second, Geese, one second. Yeah, no, you're all right, Johnny. Listen, man, it's mad. Do you know what's mad, right? Is I don't speak to many Chelsea fans like this. Like, I speak to a couple. Big up to Goonie, man. I've got to shout him out. Goonie's like this. Goonie's like, I've had enough of this. This ownership can do one. This ain't what I signed up for. This isn't Chelsea. This isn't what I want to be seeing moving forward. I've got to do something about this. And there's a certain section of the fan base that look now, like Johnny's saying, that they might be doing this. But if I'm an Arsenal fan and this is happening to my club, I'm doing as much as I can to get them out because it's an absolute disgrace that Chelsea fans, not many more of them that I speak to, aren't doing what Johnny and the guys are trying to do. So I'll be absolutely amazed if there isn't a massive turnout for something like this, in my opinion, because I grew up uh, when Chelsea weren't under Roman Abramovich. But when they were, they were proper, mate. Absolutely no one could touch them. Most successful in the last two decades for a reason, because yeah. the ownership is quality. This ownership is absolutely sh shambolic from what I can see. Now, listen, as a football fan, I'll be looking at it thinking, how can they do it? As an Arsenal fan, I hope it stays. Because obviously I can't stand Chelsea, right? And you'd be the same if it was happening at Arsenal. But let's be real, man. Like, what is going on is a show. Let me ask you, Johnny, right? Because there's a lot of people give Poch a lot of stick. And I think fair play. Because I've never quite understood why he gets massively rated. Like, I think he did a good job at Tottenham. But he didn't win anything with him. Let's be real. He got him to a final of a Champions League, which was an overachievement. But was embarrassment of a final display. He got him into, into a Champions League. He went for a title race come third when there was only two of them in it. This geezer hasn't actually got many teams across the line. So when there was the appointment, this geezer was brilliant with young players. I always questioned who he was brilliant with. And then no one can reel off these young players that he's great with other than Harry Kane, right? So I always questioned why he was the, the best person for Chelsea. But how much of this is on him this season and how much of it is on, like, away from him in terms of the ownership and the players? Because, like, I actually think he has got a hold of a cut of L's in some of the games I've seen him play and some of the stuff he's tried to do with these players is poor, man. Not that I rate the players, by the way. Well, first and foremost, yeah, Poch is not elite. Agreed. Um, again, you've brought in a downgrade on Thomas Tuchel, yeah, because TT was elite. TT was an elite problem-solving gaffer. 
not just elite in the fact that he gets over the line and wins trophies and gets you demands the stands and levels. But he had a when he landed his chopper at Cobham when we played Wolves the night before Wolves, instantly you saw an identity of play. Instantly. You could see the formation. Everyone was on the same page. He brought experienced players back into the equation that were getting like pushed out, like Rudigers and Georgies and all these players. All right. And instantly you could see identity. When Jellyfish Potters come in and Jellyfish Potters come in, there has been no identity, no patterns of play. It's just rely on Cole Palmer, rely on individual brilliance, because this team's been built by AI data, which means they are only looking at individual players, putting them all together and hoping it all works. But football doesn't work like that because you need a gaffer who has an identity, a philosophy, a way of playing. He has a certain type of profile player that suits the way he plays. Some are a little bit more versatile than others, granted, in different positions. And you have a core spine. And you can rely on that core spine with experience. We don't have experience. We don't have a spine. We've spent one billion. And you're you're basically asking Pochettino, who, let's have it right, on that list, you had Light Bulbhead Company, Ange Post, Angeru, um, you, you had Nagelsmann and Enrico who said, see you later, we're not taking the job. And that's exactly what happened. It wasn't the other way around, which the PR said it was. They rejected it. Jose's rejected the job. And he's actually come out publicly and said, it's, I'm sorry, my friend, it's not the same Chelsea that we once all knew, right? Which tells you when we're, we're not Chelsea. This is not Chelsea, right? As he knows and as he built the foundation. But Pochettino, you're expecting him an ex gaffer to win nothing in the English game, gone to PSG, bottled the first... Uh, first year at PSG with Neymar, Messi, Mbappe, Verratti, Marquinhos, bruv. What are we doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Elite players, bruv. They win that but every year. It's like Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga. So he's bottled that, bottled Champions League, then wins it the second year because he bottled it to Lille. Who, when have they won a league title? You know what I'm saying? So I look at that and I go, all right, what's he done with experienced players? World-class players. Not a lot. Anyone can win the league gun. Do you know what I'm saying? Any gaffer can go there and win that with that team. All right. So he's come to Chelsea. He's not a problem solving gaffer. He's not even that great at developing, bruv. But what he had at Spurs was a difference. He had a bit of experience. He did work a bit with Levy. He was a yes man at Spurs. So he's a yes man, is what I'm saying. He's just like the best of the best yes men out of what was acceptable to the supporters because you've gone from Thomas Tuchel, the Potter. You have to give us someone better than Potter, but you're never going to get an elite gaffer. I made many streams saying only an elite gaffer changes the model because it's the model that's the issue in the cancer at Chelsea. All right. Well, Poch doesn't change that model. He just allows it to trickle on. And Pochettino, whether you like it or not, he's been dealt a shit hand. Like if you look at the squad, he asked for experience in the summer. He didn't get any experience. He actually asked for it publicly. He outright came out and said, if I don't play Casado and Enzo, the fans will kill me, but the owners will kill me as well. So he's forced to play these two every game. He's forced to play certain players. He's forced to bench players like Thiago Silva. How can you not play Thiago Silva in a Carabao Cup final, bro? I mean, it's just criminal. Look at Van Dyke, what he did with the kids that they had. Leadership, captain. You know what I'm saying? Why didn't you even give the captaincy to Thiago Silva? I know the answer to that. He was in Reese James's contract to give the captaincy, bro. You know, but Reese James is injured, so you give it a Chilwell. Chilwell's injured. You give it a fucking Connor instead of Thiago. And none of these players are captains apart from Thiago Silva. So, what's Poch like tactically? Yeah, you can question him. But what's Poch's style of play anyway? What's so great about it? You know what I'm saying? He doesn't play amazing football. Hundred percent. I agree. He, he, I, he I don't see a style of play. He's not I, a winner. He's not got the levels. He's not going to get that dressing room believing that they're going to win and dominate. He comes in the first when he signs for Chelsea. This is Chelsea, most successful club. You have to win. I want to win the Premier League, Carabao Cup, FA Cup, all this jazz. All right. Then it goes back to, oh, because it's not going so well. It's a process. Trust the process. It's a different project now. It's not the Chelsea of old and all this shit. All right. And then he goes to mid-tables are reality, right? Because mid-tables are reality. He's not actually saying anything wrong. <laughs> and everyone comes at him, but he's not actually saying anything wrong because his hands are tied, bruv. He put out, pulled the program out going, 
Look at all these players, 20-year-olds, 18-year-olds, this and that. We've got injuries. <laughs> injuries is then Kunku and fucking James that sit on the injury list. I don't want to hear that, all right? But the reality is, that is your squad, fella. 20 years old, 22 years old, 23 years old. You ain't, you ain't going to get any experience if you stay. So, Poch is like, I'm doing the best I can, really. Because like you say, and like I know, this this fan base overhypes too much, bro. Massively. They're overhyping players that not only have they not even delivered at Chelsea, which is the fundamental fact and what matters, they haven't even delivered where they've come from. They haven't won anything. Enzo's only come with a World Cup. You know what I'm saying? And Cuckoo's come with a poker, bro. You know? <laughs> What's bad is Sheila and Disarcy done? They come fighting relegation in Monaco. What's Gusto done? Well, they haven't won anything. So you're bringing non-winners, downgrades, potential, all based on data. Well, the data lies, like the computer says, no, the data lies, mate. Yeah. The data's the biggest myth going, bruv. Yeah. What's got, what's happening to coaching now? What's happening to the eye test, bruv, of actually scouting players, bruv? You know what I'm saying? That's how football should be done. The elite players, they look you know, the professionals in the game, they, you can tell if a player's got it or ain't got it just by watching them. Or if they got particular, you don't need to look at their fucking stats. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not football manager. So My... in, in, our, in, in defense to Poch, he was never going to be that guy. He's not going to win you anything. And even if he won me an FA Cup and got, got me Europa League, I, I don't want him. I, like he's ex-Spursy. That's it. End of. He's forced Fact. upon me just like Potter was. No, nah, man, you're absolutely right, brother. I think everything you've just said there is spot on, man. And listen, like, I, I've, I've got to be real with you as well, man. Like, the, the the players definitely are overrated by some of your, your fans, man. Like, honestly, massively overgassed. I'm not saying they're absolute dumpsters, you know. I'm a big fan of a couple of them. I think they've got some, you've got some good potential in there. But let's be real, it ain't what's going to win you or take you to the top. I want to ask you, man, lastly, before we come to a close, right? What do you want to happen? Yeah, I'm talking ownership board and manager. That's what I'm talking. What do you want to see happen right now as a Chelsea fan, Johnny? All right. In an ideal scenario, yeah, I want I want Poch gone. I want you to bring me back a Thomas Two called Jose Marino. All right, or you go and get me, um, go and get me like a, a Nagelsman, someone you can build with. But I'd want Jose or Tuchel relay the foundations sack win stanley stack sack stuart little sack the ceo all right from clear lake all right and go and get me like liverpool are doing like manchester united and ratcliffe are doing go and get me the best in the business directors wise sporting directors commercial directors all right have it all aligned scouters erase this kindergarten fc epstein fc model yeah of just buying under 22 year olds and go and buy me some Fucking proven pedigree, experience, and generals, bruv. Yeah, some men in my team. Thank you very much. I want some men. I don't want kids. All right. I don't want it to be a farm, bruv. Yeah. Oh, McDonald had a farm. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't want all that jazz. Yeah. You can fucking shove your franchise where the sun don't shine, man. All right. All this NBA money ball franchise is a load of waffle. Um, and then really, ideally, I'd like the owners to sack themselves and get the fuck out of Chelsea. That's what I want. <laughs> You know, I want them out. I, I actually want them out, bruv. Sell it to some Saudi, bruv. I don't care. This ain't a Russian owner now. It's the UK government. They, they can't have their backup now. Sell it to someone who actually wants to come in and make Chelsea great, bruv, and actually compete. Because let's have it right, Dan, yeah? We were at a level where Tuchel, before he had Reese James and, and Chilwell injured, we were competing at top of the table, bruv. We would have gone on a title charge that season with the squad we had, which everyone was moaning about. Me included. We needed tweaks. We needed DM. I wanted Declan Rice, bro. You know what I'm saying? And a Casado. You know, I wanted these players. People were coming at me because I was wanting Declan Rice, Mason Mount, Bellingham, uh, Frankie de Jong, bro. I, this is this is the, the midfield I wanted, yeah? And people were coming at me going, oh, no, Declan Rice, 110 million. So pay the fucking money. We went for 100 whatever million anyway. With yeah. one or two years on his contract. That's what you pay for experience and, and potential, proper potential. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, and he wanted to come to Chelsea. Do you know when Declan Rice's family were in the in the in the negotiations with Chelsea? You got Meatloaf Bowley on his phone, just fucking didn't even look at him, didn't even converse, bro. They don't give a shit. You know what they did to Kai Havertz? Yeah, Go on. they sat Kai Havertz in January, bro. Not many know this, but I do, and I can fucking vouch it and say it for what it is. And that's how I, you know what I'm saying. I'm not wrong with what I say. Everyone can prove me, try and prove me wrong, but I ain't wrong, bro. Yeah. And I've got all the clips and all my streams on my channel that will prove everything, bro. That I've said years, been a year and a bit now. Yeah. But Kai of us was sat down. They said to him, Kai, you're on 100 and I think he was on 210 million, uh, 210 grand, whatever a week, something like that. They sat him down. They said, we want you to sign a two-year extension, Kai. Uh, he says, okay, okay. Uh, and then he goes, uh, they say to him, yeah, but we want you half your wages. And he goes, what? Half my wages? So Kai knew mid-season that these lot wanted him out. So that affects your performance, your morale, your motivation. Mason wow. Mount was the same, all right? Mate, that's crazy. Kovacic as well. Kovacic, he knew as well. Kante. Kante went on Sky Sports and basically said... I hope these owners have the same ambition of what Chelsea is. He knew there weren't no ambition. That's why his surgery and he, he got shipped out, bruv. Otherwise, he would have stayed. And can't a world Man. class, bruv. So these are things people don't understand. You know what I'm saying? They only offered Mount 200 grand a week on a one year extension, mate. Yeah. That's not <laughs> wanting you to keep the player. That's you wanting to sell the player for more money to get that year extension. And now he's the fucking number seven. Uh, you're not, you know what I'm saying? It's a mess, bruv. It's a mess. Honestly, what a mess of a club, honestly, man. This is mad. Like, you see stuff like that and you think, what is going on? They ain't got a clue, this ownership, mate, Chelsea. They ain't got a clue what they're doing. And no. if the play, if the fans don't unite to try and get them out, this is going to be hell for you, mate, for the next Can I, can of I years. say this? Do you Go remember on. at the start of this season, I swear Arsenal were protesting against the Cronkies, or was it last season? Last was, season. Yeah. Last season, you protested, yeah? All right? Cronky out. I remember that, all right? Yeah. So did Liverpool. Liverpool were protesting, all right? FSG out. They put a plane up and all that jazz, yeah? yeah. Everyone yeah. remembers that. Ever since those two instances has happened, you got um, Stan Cronky stepping down, his son's coming, right? Yeah. Yeah? And at FSG, they changed it and they went out and spent money and bought players. Facts. That's the power of supporters. So my message to all the Chels is always been the same. If we all protest together and we land the damn fucking minerals, yeah, we will change the fate of our football club. Whether that means them changing the entire model, which is great. And if you do that, respect to you. You know what I'm saying? We'll give you back in, all right? But if you don't want to do that, there's only one way, and that's out the door. And it ain't at Chelsea. You ain't coming back to Chelsea. So... That's what we can do as supporters is to is to is to save our football club and reclaim our football club because it's been robbed, bro. And salute to Don Roman Abramovich. And I want to shout out my Chelsea old boys, bro. RIP Chelsea old boys, proper Chels, Minnows FC Ultra, Chelsea Ultra, and salute to all the Minnows FC Ultras. I just seen in the chat you hit 17k, my geezer. So congratulations. Nah, listen, come on. Thank you for that, man. And thank you for everyone in the chat as well for the subs. Uh, hit 17K. Amazing. Next target, 20. So let's hope we can get up to that one quickly as well. Smash the subs. Smash the likes. Make sure you go follow Minerals FC as well. Make sure you go follow Jolly, of course. Um, listen, last question before we get out of here. Arsenal, just quickly. Uh, what do you expect this season? Has it been a good season so far? Are you expecting it to end in tears? Or do you think we'll have a good season to end it? I think you've got a good chance in the league. I think Liverpool, with the injuries, might just fall off a little bit. Okay. Although I did have them as a pick because it's Klopp's last year. But I think that FA Cup game is going to hurt them um, with United, which was a blockbuster. Um, but I think Arsenal, I think your fixtures are pretty decent from what I've seen um, compared to everyone. But your game is against City. I think that game can't be a draw for Arsenal and it can't be a loss. It has to be a win. And I think if you do win that, you'll start to believe that little bit more, which will help you. Whether you get over the line, City are just a well-oiled machine. 
They've got KDB back now. They've got Haaland back. I don't know if Grealish is even coming back. I've heard there's sats, tats of him leaving. That's a player I'd definitely buy. But mm. I think City are still favourites. Um, but you just don't know in this league. Where you might fail in the league is because of the Champions League and the intensity of those games midweek in between yeah. Premier League games. Because your, your squad's not used to playing Champions League football of yeah. this level, right? And you're playing Bayern Munich, who everyone is tarnishing and showing disrespect to. But when you look at their team, bruv, you know what I'm saying? They've got Harry Spitface Kane up front, who's always clutch against you lot. You've got yep. Thomas Muller, who loves a little bounce. You know what I'm saying? He's he's a he's a mentality monster. Goretzka, um, you've got Tommy Tina dugout. You've got Kimmich there. You've got Coman, Sane. Uh, Musiala. Musiala. You know, they've got a very good team. And that some of them have done it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and TT's definitely done it. So when your gaffer's done it, whereas Lego Ed hasn't done anything, it's going to be interesting. You have to win at your ground against them. But even in, even with that, they've got no supporters at the Emirates. So that might help you. Yeah. Um, but it also might drive to or fire him up. He broke his toe in his team talk in the last game. So what's he going to do? <laughs> Break his fucking leg. <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> For the next one. Um, but yeah, if you go to Bayern Munich, um, it's, mate, we know we've been there. We've mudded them on their own turf in the Champions League final. Let's have it right. Um, not everyone can do that. But listen, I don't really want you to go through. I want T.E. T.E.'s my gaff. I want him to mud you, bruv. Um, but uh, league-wise, there's a there's a slight chance, bruv. I don't know. You know what? It's so tight, man. Yeah. It's, it's so tight. City, you just don't want to go against City because, no. I mean, if they win it, what's that? Four on the bounce, bruv. Four, man. And you know what's mad? Their favourites to do another treble. If you look at it now, their favourites to win the league, favourites to win the FA Cup, and favourites to win the uh, Champions League again. You think, could they do a back to back treble? I mean, they go down as the best ever. It's just ridiculous, mate. Like, And all of us, look, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to catch that? So, like, you know, real talk, I've had my doubts and concerns over uh, Mikel Arteta, I have, and the regime, because I don't like processes that take six years. I want to win now because we've been waiting long enough, right? My club's gone without 20 years without a Premier League title and 30 years without any European heritage. And that was the cup when his cup against Palmer, right? In 94, weren't even a Champions League. So for me, I want to win now. I've been waiting long enough. But to be fair to him, if you want to actually look at what he's done, two years consistently in a title race, and he's obviously put us back challenging, which is where we needed to be, fair play to him. Can he get us across the line? That's my big question mark. He ain't done it yet, and I need him to do that to prove that he's the right guy moving forward. And until he does that, I will always have my doubts, Johnny. Do you know what I mean? I'll always have my doubts that we've got the right man. But uh, fair play to him at the moment. It's looking good, playing beautiful football and some of the best in the league. When you go up against Pep, you just it's hard, mate. It's bloody hard. You've and got the best got... goal difference, haven't you, right now? Yeah, best defence. Best, best defence. Yeah. So, yeah. normally, that wins you titles. Normally, exactly. you know. Exactly. Chelsea had the best defence record ever, conceding 15, 15 goals in one season. Crazy, mate. Like, Crazy. Valio, Terry. Um, but I, I will say this. I think... I blame you lot for this trust the process nonsense, bruv, yeah? Because it's where it's where it's originated from. This trust the process has come from goons, do you know what I mean? And Lego Head and all this. But Fact. look, everyone's been le Lego Head out. I know that. I've seen it, yeah? yeah. And now yeah. it's like since the protest, like it's sort of changed a bit. He almost walked out in the summer and yeah. now he's chosen to stay. Barca job's going to be open. Looks like maybe Real Madrid job will be open. Um, maybe Man City job will be open. Who knows? But <laughs> he he will he will go soon. If he doesn't win this year, I think you will give it one more year because yeah. the players that you've brought in, like Declan Rice, Havertz, and these guys, and I think if you do actually get like an Ivan Tony, Ozyman, or Goreski, whatever his name is, you get a proper striker because Jesus has always been injury prone. I knew that when you signed him. Um, yeah. I think once you get a proper striker like they got Haaland and you can get your 25 plus goals out of that, just a striker, plus your Sackers, Martinelli's, Averts, Odegaard's all chipping in, Declan Rice's, then I think you've got a makings of going on a proper title run and, and getting over the line. Not to say you can't do it this year, but you are, again, like last year, one or two injuries away from it. Saliba or Gabriel, whatever, and, and defence gets injured. 
your goalkeeper, Raya. You know what I'm saying? You get that geezer, Rams, Ramsdale, whatever his name is, yeah. Yeah. At the back. You know, he's 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 a he's a he's gone in it, he's in the mud. Um, yeah, he's going, yeah. So there's still surgery to be done, but small surgery, not like us. We need major surgery, bruv. And it was self-sabotage from our clowns. Um <laughs> but yeah, like listen, I I don't f- I I think the mentality is still an issue because Lego ain't won anything still. He, you know, as a gaffer, you need to have that under your belt. If you get the one, then it it will it will the belief will be there will be so much belief in the gaffer that the players will buy into it. That's the problem you got with all this trust the process is if the players don't see the process or don't trust the process and that stems from the gaffer and also the ownership, then it's never going to work no matter what you do. So Lego's got his last chance basically to show that there is a, there is something to believe in because otherwise mm. what's the point? If you don't believe in it, what's the point? Mm. I will give credit to your supporters. You know what I'm saying? Get building that atmosphere, building that belief because it's very important. You know, we've had it at Chelsea for years. You know, it doesn't matter what we do, what gaff is in charge. We know our, our generals on the pitch. We're the supporters and we back our team through thick and thin. They fight and we will be underdogs in certain games and we won't be. Do you know what I mean? But there was that winning mentality and belief no matter what. And that died at Arsenal for years, bruv. And you still yeah. ain't won anything, but you're starting to creep up with that. But let's see. The moment it falls, bruv, if Lego don't win this year, it's going to be a massive divide again. Yeah, and well, he's got to win toxic... Yeah, bro. It's going to be yeah. horrible, man. And there's got to yeah. be justification if you don't. And I said this. If we don't win, saying, right, we get a Champions League final against Real Madrid and we go out on pens and we take City to the last game of the season, we miss out on a point. I'm not going to be harsh enough to go get this clown gone, right? But if we do go out in a bad way, really fall off, finish like nine, ten points off, then there'll be justification as to why people will be pissed off to say, is this guy actually going to get us across the line? That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying I'm in or out. You know, I was out, I set her out before. Absolutely. He started to prove a lot of people wrong last season. This season, he's got us back into challenging again. So you've got to give the geezer his credit and his, and his flowers for that. But I've had my doubts. Of course I have, you know. I want Arsenal winning. And if Arsenal ain't winning, I'm not happy. Basically, I'm not one of these. We come fourth, let's do a, a, a cartwheel round the roundabout. I don't do all that crap. That's you know finger I mean? tax. Yeah, know, it is, mate. Well, that, that's trophy. the problem. That's yeah. the problem, though, Johnny. He was massive and people loved him. So then when he says top four is a trophy, these 14 and 15 year olds at the time are now in their late 20s going, if we come fourth, what's the problem? That's why I hate about it because I grew up winning, mate, on George Graham. I grew, up, I grew up winning on George Graham and I grew up winning on Arsene Wenger. And when he started saying fourth to trophy, I was done. I thought, no, I can't have this anymore. Fourth place is you've got three people ahead of you and you need to make sure you're getting ahead of them three. Not, oh, that's not so bad then. And this is what I mean. When they did the treble in 99, did I walk out of Ivory in 2000 going, second's good because Man United, innit? They're treble winners. But they expect me to do that now with Pep. Nah, mate, I want to win the league. I want to win the championship. I I don't like this whole thing of, oh, yeah, don't worry, City will keep winning. I don't want them to keep winning, bruv. No, it's like, I can't yeah. stand that City are winning. It's like, the thing is, their heritage, they're, they're, them as a club, it's like people still find them just irrelevant, bruv. You know what I'm saying? When you think about it, like they could be one of the greatest ever teams. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yet you still look at them and go, oh, it's just Man City. Do you know what I mean? There's no hatred like I've got towards Spurs, Arsenal, Man United, Liverpool. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't have that. You know, I don't want to see Liverpool win a title. I don't want to see United win a title. I don't want to see Arsenal win a title, bruv. Spurs, he will never win a title. They're bottle jobs. They are the elite bottle jobs. So they're never <laughs> going to win nothing anyway. All right? They just keep doing their concerts, having the wig merchant Beyonce and fucking her old her, her partner, bruv, that fraudulent rapper, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? Doing them concerts all 24-7. No, bruv. Yeah, F1 Listen, track, mate. F1 track. I, I say this, right? When you want to win, it's very simple. Your ownership will allow you to win and they'll yeah, give facts. everything you need to win. And it's not about, let's build the next fucking R9. Let's find the next uh, Ronaldinho and let's try and go budget option. No, you go out and buy the best of the best. Do what Real Madrid do. Do what Bayern Munich do. Do what Chelsea used to do. And that was win for the now. 
And that's elite mentality. That's how a big elite club runs. That's how we were running. And we're not being run like that now. Yeah. We've been run like seagull merchants, but mid table, <laughs> right? You lot, you lot, again, you are spending big. Lego had spent big. He spent, big what, time. over half a billion easy, bro. Yeah, you know mate, 600, 600 million. 600 million. So there's no excuses, bro. There's no excuses. You know what I'm Facts, saying? Facts, man. Facts. And even Roman, people have this misconception that Roman just bought mega signings. No, he didn't. He bought Didi Drogba for like 28 million, bro. Or was it less than that? All right. Bought uh, N'Golo Kante, 32 million. Bought Eden Hazard, 31 million. You know, we 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 we, did, we bought ballers, yeah, that wanted to come to us to come and win, bruv. We had Frank Lampard on 10 million, bruv. You know, that was pre-Roman, though. But 10 million was a lot back then, and everyone questioned it. And Lampard's greatest ever goal-scoring midfielder, bruv, to ever exist in the game, bruv. Do you know what I'm saying? 20 goals a season on average. You winding me up. Like, sometimes you don't have to spend big. But sometimes you do mix it up with those blockbuster signings because it shows your intent and ambition. It raises the levels in the squad and in, in the overall culture. You know what I'm saying? It's about a winning culture and mentality. And that's what Roman instilled. And that's been gutted from us. You lot haven't had it for, well, since Wenger won a few times and that was it. It just died down, didn't it? Sir Alex Ferguson, ever since Sir Alex Ferguson left Man United, that mentality has gone down the bin. You know, it's all about just creaming off the top, making money. Um, Man City, the owners don't care about money. They just want to make Manchester United, Manchester City bigger than Man United. You know that that is actually what they want, and they're 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 going to get. I don't think they'll win as many titles because how long's Pep going to be there? But they've already won a treble. They won a Champions League. You know yeah. they win another two. They they level on that. Um, and Pep's got a whole structure aligned with him. Yeah, man. That that's how you win. Yeah, man. You build with an elite gaffer. You know what I'm saying? Serve it right. Yeah. No, nah, listen. Talking facts, my bro. Um, Mate, it's been a pleasure having you on, man. I can't lie. It really has. And thanks so much for coming on, Johnny. Make sure you do me a favour in the chat. Make sure you hit a like on this. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks so much, you all, for allowing us to hit 17k tonight. And uh, and make sure you go follow Johnny Mini. How can people follow you, my bro? Oh, it's just Minnows FC on YouTube. Um, and on Twitter, Minnows FC, Insta, I don't, Insta's Insta, bruv. Um, same again, Minnows FC, it's just Minnows FC, bruv. Let's have it right. Um, <laughs> we see things that we'll never see up the Chels, uh, all day long, bruv. Um, and yeah, um, I will be setting up a rumble as well. I've told all my ultras that, but, um, rumble's on the way, bruv, as well. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, just follow me, Minnows FC, let's have it right. Big up to oh. everyone. Listen, love for coming on, man. Love to have a chat with you again next uh, few weeks. We'll get you back on and have another chat. See if things have changed, mate. Uh, let's see where we're at. Uh, big up for coming on. Make sure you do us a favour, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and make sure you also click the link to Surfshark VPN. It's pinned in the comments um, who are sponsoring the channel. So make sure you click on that as well and sort yourself out. Phil. Here we go. That is what Chelsea fans are putting around Stamford Bridge. Get them out, Clown Lake. Um, let's see. Watch this space. Let's see what the Chelsea fans are made of. See if they can unite and see what they can do to get an answer off their ownership. It's worked in other clubs. So let's see. Where are we at? We well, see things they'll never see. <laughs> you got to love it, man. Listen, big up to you, Johnny, for coming on, man. Really Respect. appreciate it, bro. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time, guys. Take it easy. We're out of here. Peace. <laughs>